All right, let's test this movement logic. First, I'll move left. Wait, what the heck? Um, let me try up. <laughs> What's going on here? How do these get flipped? Oh, it's Charles. Maybe you can help me out. Hey, Barls, how's it going? Hey, man, it's going okay. Just uh, working on a small prototype. You? Eh, I just got off of a long work call and honestly, I'm burnt out. But um, I'd love to see what you're working on. Maybe it'll help me get my mind off of things. Sure, although fair warning, I just found a bug. Ah, no worries, I'm sure we can figure it out. Awesome, here, let me share my screen. So I've only been working on this for like 20 minutes, but basically you control this little sheet that's supposed to hop around using grid-based movement. Nice, looks really good. How are you handling the hopping animation? Uh, for that, I'm using a tweening asset called do tween. It literally has a function called do jump. <laughs> that's pretty smart. Well, everything looks good, but uh, where's that bug you mentioned? Right, you can't really see it here, but all of the controls are actually flipped. Oh, no kidding. Yep, when I try to go left, the sheep jumps to the right. And when I try to go up, the sheep jumps downwards. Gotcha. Well, let's take a look at the code. To start, open up the class that handles input. Okay, that would be the uh, player class. So it's pretty basic because all the actual movement is handled by the sheep class. Right. I can see here that the player has a reference to a sheep object that it grabs using get component. Exactly. The only thing the player class is responsible for is determining a direction based on the current input and then passing it into the sheep's move method. Cool. And is that direction class something that you made? Yeah, I created it to encapsulate vectors that represent each of the cardinal directions. Awesome. So. Our bug is gonna be somewhere in the player, direction, or sheep class. Why don't we start with the player class and work our way down? Sounds good to me. So taking a closer look at this input logic, I wanna say that it looks correct. Yeah, I think you're right. I can see that you're using the WASD keys and your directions all look good to me. Hmm, great. So now let's take a look at the direction class. We just wanna spot check those static properties to make sure that each cardinal direction corresponds to the correct vector. Okay, so for example, the north direction should return a vector with zero for x, one for y, and zero for z, which it does. Yeah, it sure does. And it looks like all the other vectors line up as well. All right, so I guess that leaves one last place to look. Yep, I think we're gonna find our bug in the move method of the sheep class. All right, let me open that one up. Perfect, so let's see what we have here. Starts off with some state logic, then a call into update sprite method, and then, aha, what, you found it? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, line 25, looks like you flipped your upper end. You need to be adding the direction vector, not subtracting it. Oh wow, you're right. Here, let me fix this. There, we should probably test it out too, just for good measure. True. Wow, that was it. I don't even remember doing that. I mean, it was working earlier. What a stupid mistake. <laughs> yeah, well, speaking from experience, they usually are, which is why I always recommend writing unit tests. Oh no, not unit tests. Hey man, I'm just saying, you could have caught that bug way early on and saved yourself all that time walking through the code. All right, I'll bite. How would we write unit tests for this? Seriously? Yeah, I'm curious because honestly, I wouldn't even know where to begin. Okay, that's fair. I think we should probably start off easy by writing tests for your direction properties. Really? Sure. I mean, they do play a fundamental role in your movement logic. So I think you'd wanna have some tests in place to make sure that they don't change, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Let's do it. Perfect. First, we're gonna to need to do a little bit of setup. Okay. There are a few different ways to set up a Unity project for unit tests, but we'll go ahead and take the easiest route. That sounds good to me. Start by adding a folder called tests to your project. Okay. Next, open up the window menu, expand the general section, and click on test runner. And go ahead and dock it somewhere. I usually place it beneath the inspector. Okay, looks good. Yep. Now, there are two types of tests in Unity, edit mode and play mode, and they both rely on assemblies to be set up correctly. Oh yeah, I remember assemblies. We talked about those a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. We're gonna need to set up an assembly for our scripts folder, but first, 
Let's talk about these tests. Okay, so in Unity, play mode tests are for testing code that needs to be executed in a running scene to function properly. And edit mode tests are for testing code that can run anywhere else. Okay, so the sheep class would need play mode tests because it's a mono behavior, right? Exactly. And so then the direction properties can be tested with edit mode tests. You got it. Let's go ahead and set those up now. First, select the test folder. Then click on the edit mode button on the test runner window. And then click on create edit mode test assembly folder. And go ahead and name it edit mode. Nice. Now you can create your first test script by clicking on the create test script in current folder in the test runner. And let's call it direction tests. Wow, so far so good. Seems pretty straightforward. Yeah, it isn't too bad. Although this next part can seem a little confusing if you aren't familiar with assemblies. We need all of our project scripts to be associated with an assembly so our tests can see them. Yeah, that makes sense. Good. So go ahead and add one to the script folder. Okay. And now add it as a reference to the edit mode assembly. Like that? Yeah, that's perfect. Now we're ready to write our first test. Open up the direction test file. That's a lot of boilerplate code. Yep, but you can remove all of it. Everything except for that first method. Sure. And then go ahead and just rename that method to north since that's the property we'll be testing. Okay. All right. Now we can finally write our test, which will consist of one assertion. Okay, and what's that? We need to test that the value of north equals the vector 0, 1, 0. So make a call to assert dot r equal and pass in that vector for the first parameter because that represents the expected value. And pass in direction dot north dot vector for the second parameter because that represents the actual value. Perfect. Now switch back to Unity and run that test in the test runner. It passed. Awesome. Yeah. So now all you have to do is write a test for each one of the other directions and you can feel confident that you'll be covered. Great. And you know what? That wasn't too bad, right? I mean, sure, there's a little bit of setup, but after that, adding tests is pretty easy. Well, for edit mode tests at least, but I get the feeling that play mode tests are gonna be much harder. Actually, not really. Here, click on the test folder again and uh, switch to the play mode tab in the test runner. Okay. Now click on create play mode test assembly folder, name it play mode, click on create test script and current folder, and let's name it sheep test. Perfect. I have to reference my scripts in the play mode assembly too, right? Yep, that's right. Go ahead and do that now. Great. Now open that up in Rider so we can add a test. Ew, more boilerplate. <laughs> yep. This time, remove everything but the method marked with the Unity test attribute. Much better. That unity test attribute is what's gonna let us write a test that will run in an actual scene. Go ahead and rename that method to move north. Okay. Hey, is there some sort of naming convention that I can use to name these tests? There actually are quite a few, but in this case, I'm trying to keep the names as simple as possible. Okay, so what next? Well, we're gonna need to create a game object and add our sheep component to it. Okay. Then call sheep.move and pass in the direction north. Like that? Yep, that's great. Now, this next part is a little tricky. We need to wait for as long as it takes for the sheep to complete its jump. Hmm, 
Well, the sheep class does expose a variable called jump duration that represents how long the movement action takes. Could we use that? Absolutely. Cool. Now, let's finish up by asserting that the position of the game object has changed correctly. Okay, so it should be at vector 0, 1, 0, since it started at 0. That's right. Great. Now, switch back to Unity and let's test it out. Check it out, it passed. Of course it did. But more importantly, it'll fail if you ever make a change to that code that breaks the expected behavior. Okay, I'm really starting to see the value of these tests after all. There's a little bit of upfront work, but it honestly wasn't too bad. Trust me, that time spent pays dividends in the long run. Fair enough. Well, man, as always, thank you for your help. Yeah, no problem, man. And thank you for giving me something to get my mind off of work. I always enjoy a good programming problem. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> All right, man, I'm gonna hop off. Have a good one. <laughs> All right, later, later. Special thanks to Dark Rush Photography, Glasswell Entertainment, Nav from Academy of Games, R-Star, Thomas, Trond, Yusuf Ali Castle, and Jakob Al-Safari. Thanks, guys.